Hey guys, so welcome to the next part of the beginner C Sharp series tutorials and today we're going to be looking at input specifically an input based on this one example but input can be any type of input it can be you press a key to make a object do something you press a key to make an interaction you press a key to make the player jump you may press a key to move the player there's a lot of different elements to this and input is always detected every frame in something like an update function and it's something that's really important and there's several ways to look at it you can use the built-in input manager within unity or you can often use third-party tools like rewired and in control which you can buy from the unity store which go a long way to actually allow you to easily use any type type of controller or joypad or anything like that and keyboard mouse whatever it may be just out of the box and save you time but I'll quickly give you an example of what the input manager looks like in unity if I if we go edit project settings and we go to input you can see here that my input manager here has got a few different options added to it because I added rewired to this project and this adds a lot of different inputs to my um, already existing allows you to have as many different inputs as you want and give it a specific name and it allows you to make a positive and negative button so you imagine that if you are to move horizontal you're going to move left and right dead zones gravity snapping inversion and things like that within this input manager and you can create a whole host of other inputs and if you need to you can just add to the array you can increment the array by one or you can right click on any of the actual array items and click duplicate array element and it'll just allow you to add another. When we've got it for this instance, um, if you've seen in some of the previous other tutorials, that this ball is more simple than a, a lot of different character controllers and things like that. You can get one from the Unity Asset Store, the standard assets, and you can get the first person character and other things and many other things like that. But more often than not, on a player character, you will most likely have a rigid body. And a rigid body, you can go add component and type in rigid body. And when you add that, it, class, it classes as adding physics to our object. And it allows to take gravity into account. It allows to give a mass to the object and different things like that. And we can program and access that component and change different elements of that component in script. And I'll show you that in the future. You also will always want to remember to probably have a collider on the object because you don't want it falling through the playable level or anything like that. So in this case, it's got a sphere collider. So just like before, we can click add component and we can type in the thing that we want. So we can type in sphere collider and select it and put it onto our object. And it allows us to do basic functionality. Well, to get you started with input, I'll show you we'll to create a quick script. So if we go into the project panel, click create C sharp and we could call this player controller. We'll open that up in Visual Studio and I will just remove the starting methods. Now we're going to start off by writing in square brackets serial field, serialized field and we need to access the rigid body component because we're going to program parts of the rigid body to do something. We access the health controller when we referenced it in our trigger script. So we'll start by writing serialized field and then we'll say private rigid body with a capital and then we can just short, shorten that to the name of RB because that's going to be our rigid body. So that's pretty much the reference to the rigid body. So we can do things from there. Often when you're doing physics and you're doing anything which would normally require a physics calculation, there's another type of update function which is called, and we can call this private void fixed update. It's got a fixed rate at which is updates. So it means that it's more consistent when using physics. So when we do this and we want to move a player in a horizontal or vertical direction, we can also, instead of actually referencing variables up here, which would be suitable for the entire script, so no matter what methods we create, it will always be available. So we could put rigid body in a custom method, just like so, we could put it in there. But sometimes we only need to create a local variable which is specific to this method alone. So what we can write is we can write a float value and we can call this float value, which is just like essentially making it private. And we can call this, set that equal to input dot get access. And we can open up the brackets and in quotes, we can write exactly the access the actual command that we wanted or the input that we were after. And we can just call it 
horizontal and we can put a semicolon in the end. So what this means is we've created that local variable of move horizontal every time each frame that the game updates and we're going to get based on the get access the input of the get access which is the horizontal direction of left and right. So we could do similar with vertical so we can call this one move vertical and we can say equals input dot get axis and then in brackets in quotes vertical so now we've got the vertical input that we've got as a local variable and we can store it as a local variable just so we can use it in other instances down here so we don't have to specifically write this line every single time we need it we're just storing it locally so more often than not when you're doing some sort of movement and anything in 3d space you will need something called a vector 3. so if i type it in as an example it represents 3d vectors and points and vector 3 is made up of three specific values an x a y and a z you can have a vector 2 and a vector 4. so seeing as though we're calling a vector 3 just like we had as a float this is another variable type and it's another local variable variable that we're going to create and we're going to call this movement and we're going to set that equal to a new vector 3 and we always have to set it as a new vector 3 because we've already declared it at the beginning and then in brackets we have like i said vector 3 is always made up of x y and z and you would add a semicolon now we could create these as custom variables say here so we could access them in the inspector but we're just going to use what we already created so of course we want to move with the horizontal and vertical axes we can use for x axes which is left and right we can call this move horizontal and then for the z axis we can move, use move vertical and y is not specific because we don't want to move up and down unless we specifically say so we can just set that equal to zero because we only want to move left and right and sort of forwards and backwards and that's what x and z do for us and then under here what we can do is we can say like we called before we, could, we wanted to select rigid body we want to say add force then open the brackets then we can say the movement which is that local variable we just created which is based on the inputs that we've got for horizontal and vertical then we want to times it by a particular value so what we do is at the top we can write square brackets serialize field choose private set this as type integer and we could call this something like speed and we can have movement times by speed because if you highlight add force and add force is always a vector 3 with a force and you can use up to three overloads and it just adds force to a particular value you can check out the unity scripting reference to check out this but we're already specifying a vector 3 which is the one here that we're filling with the values that we're specifying and we're timesing it by speed to actually apply something um, in real time so it will actually cause it to move and that's just a really nice simple way to get movement in x and z but maybe you wanted a different sort of way to do some input you want to be able to jump with your keyboard and mouse and you want to do something there so we'll do something very similar but in this case because we don't want to do it all of the time and we don't need to hold these values in a specific local variable we can just say that if input dot get key down and then in brackets our two brackets we'll say in quotes jump then we'll add our two left and right curly brackets so you can see input dot get key down and get key down is one that's used only when you press the key down once you can see the return is true during the frame that the user starts pressing down the identified name so you can use get key so it means that you could keep that key held down and it would carry on jumping whereas get key down is specific to if you hold the key down it will only ever do it once so it's very good if you want to create that type of action but then what we can do is we can just like up here we're going to do the same thing we're going to say rigid body and then in this case add force and then this time we're going to open up brackets and because add force needs a vector 3 
we're going to specify uh, a sort of shorthand way to uh, suggest a vector 3. So we'll say vector 3 dot up and then we can say times and like we did about speed we need to give it a value to be able to how high is it going to move how um, much power or force is going to be applied so we can call this jump force and then what we can do with vector 3 dot up and we can call it and say times jump force and add a semicolon on the end vector 3 dot up is just shorthand for writing the same thing like this, 0, 1, 0. It's just a shorthand for writing the values in. So that's one example of using a specific if statement to detect when we press a key. One that will allow us to affect the movement all of the time. And so on like this, but we'll test this out in Unity now. We can select our player which has the rigid body. We can add player controller to that object. You can see that there's a, a rigid body that it's looking for. We could realistically reference ourselves to that. We could add speed and we could put the speed at 10. And we could put jump force at something like 250. And based on my input manager is that we had jump in the quotes. In this case, it's actually space. You just want to check your input manager because you won't have as many inputs as me. And then you can press play and you will be able to move your object around just as we expected and you'll be able to press space to jump and i just jumped out of the world now you might have seen that my or you might notice that sometimes things in physics might not work exactly the way that you planned so you can go back into the script and you can realize that because it's a vector 3 value, we can go into minus values to do exactly the opposite that we wanted to do. So, in my case, when I was using WASD, I was doing the opposite to what I wanted. So, when I pressed W, it didn't move forward as I expected, it moved backwards. So, what you can do is you can add a minus to the front of move horizontal and move vertical. So, then it will do the opposite. You can do the same for vector 3 up and it will technically do a vector 3 dot down even though I don't think one of those exists. So it's another thing for you to remember that there's always ways and means to get around a lot of things but it's good that you can plan things. Now when I'm pressing W and I'm pressing S I'm moving forwards and backwards like I expect and I can still do the same functionality like I was expecting before. And of course when you're in these scripts you can do any number of things that you want you could add more speed, add more value, depending on if you collect power-ups. So just like we did here, that's what we might do in the future. If we go over a power-up, we might be able to get more speed. So we're going to then affect the player controller and we're going to access the speed variable and we're going to update that and we're going to constantly add little tweaks and values to get you just up to speed with everything that you do. So it's becoming a more coherent package and helping you get to grips with doing different things and talking to the scripts exactly the way you would day to day. So hopefully this helped you out. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.